Time goes by so fast on the Lord's day. Uh, Pastor Carpenter just seemed like I just get up and it's already time to get out. And I tell you, and I, in fact, it was uh, for time's sake, uh, some of the scripture will come on the screen, but I'm going to pick up in Genesis chapter 11, the last verse, and then chapter 12, uh, and read 10 verses. I want to talk to you uh, today about the beginning of the end. I'm going to do a series of messages on the life of Lot. Uh, and probably there's no questions about why that that might be. Uh, but notice, if you would, uh, as we, uh, I'm, uh, for time's sake, I'm just going to read. Uh, uh, maybe they'll, I'll, I'll ask them and they'll throw some verses up on the screen later. But look at 11 and 31. And Terah took Abram his son and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. The days of Terah was, Terah was 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered. Uh, and, of course, let me just leave off, and then uh, we'll get back with the Scripture with time fleeing by on us. Let me share this message this morning on the beginning of the end. I want to do a study in the next few weeks on the uh, life of Lot. I think it's a, a real timely uh, study for her day. And I'll say that by means of introduction for two reasons. One reason is that Lot was one of the most worldly Christians in all the Bible. In fact, if you study all the Scripture, you ever go back and you read the life of Lot, it's almost questionable whether Lot was really a Christian if you don't know all of the Scripture because he was so involved in the pagan lifestyle of Sodom uh, and Gomorrah, the cities of the plains. And so uh, when we think about the age we're living in, we're also coming into a worldly-type time for the church age. In fact, for those who were here Wednesday night, they hear a shy message. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for those days shall not come except there come a fallen away first. Uh, in the end times, in the last days, uh, Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, there will be a fallen away. I have never experienced in my Christian life the type of religion that I'm seeing today in churches and a lot of Christians. It's almost that there's that falling away has come about. Uh, churches that, who have given up on having revivals or churches who's calling off Sunday nights or churches who's given up on the old-fashioned way of preaching the Word of God and getting the mission work of God done. We're seeing today fewer people saved than ever before in all of the, of, of the major religious uh, denominations. It's just like there's something bad wrong. You say, what do you think it is? I think it's the age that we're living in. I think it's an indication today that we're living in those end times and the days of Lot are here. Now, Lot was a saved man, but a worldly Christian. I mean, he was a man, I believe, who had been born again, but he's a man who lived a life of failure because he got so worldly. 
He was so caught up in the world. He's kind of like you people you couldn't count on to be at church on a regular basis. You know the kind that misses Sunday night or misses Wednesday or, or hits and, and every now and then and, and, uh, and they're getting more frequent all the time. They're getting more worldly and they got attachments to the world and they're caught up in the world. I want to tell you it's nothing more than an indication of the last days we're living in right now. And Lot was in that type of time and the church is following the same pattern of being materialistic, earth-minded, and reaching for the world and its wealth that we have a shocking resemblance to the days of Lot. I say two reasons. The second one is it's very timely study because of the rise of the homosexual plague that is upon our land today. All of us are aware that those judges has done declared that every state in this country of ours is supposed to be able and to marry uh, men or women and, and friend, when you see that type, and, and maybe I should have known it was coming. In fact, I believe we did not too many months back. Mount Nash Baptist Church established a church constitution, whereas that we as a body do not believe except in a man and a woman and will not participate in anything other than that. And it's in our church constitution. You say, why did you think something like that was important, Pastor Carpenter? Because I knew they would come a day when they would pass a law and say that it's legalized throughout all the land. Oh, you say, well, how did you know that, Brother Billy? Because the Bible says in Luke 17, verse number 28, look what the Word of God says, and it ought to be in a, 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 a truth in the prophecy that we all understood and we all knowed. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they build. And listen, next verse please. Notice what he says. Likewise as it was in the days of Lot. What was it like? Well, it's going to be like the days of the coming of the Son of of man. Listen to me, friend. What we're seeing today shouldn't shock anybody, but what it ought to say to you is Jesus is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory! Look up! Your redemption is drawing nigh. Brother, it's a sign. The Bible says, as it was in the day of Lot, and sodomy is what we've got in our land right now and today. Uh, this scripture is being fulfilled into your years. In 2015, the last days is upon us. And we see, brethren, the spread, the openness of the homosexual plague. You know, when the light goes out, cockroaches all come out. And you see now that this is opened up. You see, Wimsburg and all the other counties begin to be bombarded with people who wants to show this lifestyle that they think is normal and the Word of God disagrees with them. And by the way, I'm going to agree on the side of God. I believe God is still right. And uh, you see the attack on them. I, we need to take a stand together. And we need to take a stand for right. And we need to support those that are standing for right. Uh, and we find today, uh, as we study the Word of God and study these passages in the days to come, uh, we'll learn more about this homosexual movement, our sodomy, and how that it's related. And what it came about is the day of judgment from Almighty God. And you remember today, uh, when we think about Lot and meet him for the first time, uh, he starts out with a wonderful beginning. Everything is seemingly on his side. His uncle Abraham is there to be a spiritual guide. And so, and by the way, uh, on, on the credit to Lot, 
I would remind you that he is a saved individual. The Bible said in 2 Peter 2, 7 and 8, delivered just lot, God said that, vexed with the filthy communication or the conversation of the wicked for that righteous man, God said that, dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. To say to his credit, it vexed him, it bothered him. Does what they did in Washington vex your spirit? Is what's going on in America bother you today? If it don't bother you, there's something wrong with you right now. But Lot, he was righteous and it bothered him and vexed him, the Word of God said. Seeing and hearing and being around that garbage. I want to tell you, if you're a saint of Almighty God, this kind of action is something that bothers you. Now, I know that introduction, so I'm going to say two things today. I want to talk to you briefly about the tears of Lot and the travels of Lot, introductory to what's going to come in the days ahead. Uh, so notice, if you would, first of all, the tears of Lot. In those early verses that we did not read, uh, the Bible tells us about him, uh, how that Lot... Had, it had such a terrible beginning in some ways because his father died, Haran, and also his grandfather uh, died, uh, and so uh, Tira, and so there was a lot of problems. Now, uh, God sends uh, sometimes difficulties of all kinds uh, into the lives of his children. Uh, sometimes the experiences that we go through in life are meant to develop us, are to help us as we walk forward in life in the service of God and so it's very likely that when things happen they're not mistakes but they're ordained of God and so God wants his service to be strong what does the future look like what's going to happen in the days to come who's going to take a stand and uh, what are those that's going to bow out and give up their Christian faith. I sometimes experience this. And so here we find Lot. He had some rough times. And he had some tears that run down his eyes. He was going to be going through some suffering. And I really would like to skip through the first portion of that, by the way, as well. Because it's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's probably, I think, maybe not as important if that could be so. But notice the tears a lot. And let me, let me get to the second one with my time of going by so quickly I want you to notice the reason for the tears of Lot that was death death came in his family in fact the Bible says that we find that his father died his father uh, his own daddy and that, that's a, a, ter a terrible troublesome event upon a young person it's hard to give up someone you love as your own father our mother and yet Lot was doing exactly that the only parent that he had in his life it was be able to sustain his life and to take care of him was his daddy and his father is dying and he did die and you can imagine the hurt that was upon his heart and the tears that were shed from this boy uh, because of his father's death. But the bitter cup of death was not just his own father, but he had to soon drink that bitter cup again because after his father died, his grandfather took him to be his own child and to take care of him and try to be the best that he could and be a parent to him. Uh, and so even as that went on, uh, he got used to being around his grandfather and he thought maybe things would be well and, and he'd have a blessed life. But even then, his own grandfather is going to die. And so if the tears of losing the father was not enough, if the heartache and the trouble that he experienced there was not sad enough, then we understand that his own grandfather who was taking care of him died as well. And so uh, we find that death caused the tears. 
And then briefly, not only was death a problem, but it's also his departures because he often was passed from pillar to post and he was moved for so often with no stability and nothing to go on in his life. Uh, he's going to be passed around. Now, a lot would end up coming under the care of Abraham. And Abraham, without a doubt, would adopt Lot as his own child and make him his. And so there was adoption probably went on that day and Abraham took him in like my son and my daughter-in-law took in this beautiful little girl uh, to raise and to take care of. Uh, and so that's what Abraham did. He didn't have anyone. And in those days, uh, women did not hold an outside job. And so with no man in his life and no bread earner, uh, he would have been certainly left out in the cold if Abraham had not have stepped up to take Take his nephew Lot under his wing and to carry him down the rest of his life. And so he adopts a Lot and he takes him with him wherever he goes and he cares for him and he ministers to him. And by the way, I told you sometimes troubles come. I think maybe God knows there's reasons behind it. And again, I don't have time to digress, but Joseph had one of the most terrible experiences that a boy could ever have and the end of it... It was the blessings of God. And I don't have time to digress. I share that. So let me get to what I want to say. Secondly, not only we see the tears of Lot, but notice the travels of Lot. And we come to Genesis chapter 12. And of course, you begin reading it, verse number 1. We learn real quickly uh, that there's some things that was going on. And uh, of course, now the Lord had said under Abel, but listen to me, for four or uh, five of the brief mentionings of Lot in her text, we're in, in, informed here that Lot uh, did a lot of traveling with his uncle Abraham. God called Abraham uh, to become the father of the righteous. Uh, God called Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, out of a very sinful lifestyle. Did you understand that Abraham was a pagan worshiping the false gods? Uh, when God reached down one day and spoke to his heart and told him that he had something planned for him, he had a better world for him, hallelujah, uh, that he had a better life for him. Uh, and Abraham heard the voice of God. Oh, you say, Brother Billy, uh, God has spoke to Abraham. Exactly right. In fact, in verse number 12, and the Lord had said... Uh, unto Abraham, get thee out of thy kindred and away from thy country and I'm going to show you and I'm going to be a blessing to you. And God spoke to him one day and Abraham had to just say, okay I believe God more than the pagan gods, more than this world and I choose to step out and to go with God. By the way when I was 17 years old God called me God spoke to me and said, I want you to have a better land. I want you to go to heaven with me. Praise God. Somebody hear what I'm saying this morning because he called you to. He called you out of a life of sin, out of a life of paganism. He called you out of a drunkard's life or an adulterer's life or a wicked life. God called you and brought you out unto him. And so God called Abram and God told him, I got something better for you. Bless God, he does have something better. I wish every sinner could understand this. I wish they could know that this is a better life. It is a better future. And Abraham was looking for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker was God. And brother, he started out because he heard the voice of God. Maybe Isaiah 1 and 18 was spoken in his years. Come unto me. Come now, let us reason together. Maybe it's Revelation 2 and 27, or, or 22 and 17, where the Bible said, and the Spirit says, come, and this morning... God is going to speak to you. And God's still calling today. And 2015, the voice of God, the power of God, he's still reaching out. Let me say quickly, I want you to see the travels of Lot. First of all, there was a trip of compromise. There was a trip of compromise. If you notice again in that verse number one, the Bible says, Now God had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. God had already spoke to him. God had told him what he wanted him to do at an earlier time. God had told him. Uh, in fact, if you look back up in verse number 31, you'll see some of it. 
And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son. Now, you, you notice right here that God had called Abram to separate. God called him to do two things. He said, I want you to separate you from your country. I want you to get out of this place. It's pagan. It's, it's not where you need to be. And the second thing was, I want you to separate from, or, 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 uh, or firstly, separate from his country to go to Canaan. And secondly, to separate from his kindred. And by the way, he didn't do that. In fact, he didn't even separate from his family. The Bible says, Tira, in verse number 31, was the one that led the way. Somehow or another, Abram had never stepped up to take his leadership position as God had called him to. But Tira had led them out, and he was taken with him, uh, Tira and Lot. Uh, you see, what does that mean? I want to tell you what it means. It means it was a compromise. And God called them to go to Canaan, and they went to Haran. And since Canaan was 500 miles, they went about halfway and stopped there. And friend, one of the great problems that's experiencing in this day, it's going to plague us in the day to come, it's already started, it's causing us some of what's happening here, is that the people of God, when God calls them, are not going all the way. I'm telling you, we're somewhere in halfway Haran. We're not doing what God told us to do. Go all the way to Canaan, get out of sin, separate yourself, and be godly. Our problem today is compromise is killing the churches. God said, Abraham, go to Canaan. Abraham goes halfway, and he stops, and he settles down. It's a compromise. When God calls you to live for him, you go 100%. 100, yes, all the way. Be godly. Be Christian. Let God be your God, and let the world know that you're standing by him. Today we go halfway. You say, Brother Billy, I'm saved. That's all that matters. I want to tell you that's a problem. You're saved by the grace of God. You're called to be a holy saint. You're called to separate yourself from sin and to give up that wicked lifestyle and honor the Lord with your life. You see, some people has gave their life to God or gave their soul to God, but they've never gave their life to God. You listen to what I'm saying? Hey, some people today that's gone halfway. I mean, you know, there's some of you have said that, that hard rock should not be listened, but some of you are still listening to soft rock. I tell you, any of that junk ought to be garbaged. Some of you have said, I've went a ways, Brother Billy, but I've not went all the way. I mean, you talk about serving God or you talk about the work, but you're not involved in it. You're not a part of it. You're living a compromised life. Abraham had went a portion of the way, but he had settled down there, and he had not went all of the direction that he should. He hadn't obeyed God 100%. And, and by the way, brethren, it's going to affect somebody else's life if you don't give God 100% of your life. Brother, I want to tell you, Sunday ought to be all day Sunday. Honoring God ought to be all day in your life. You ought to love him, live for him, and do your best you can for him. Uh, so first of all, that was a trip of compromise that's going to affect him. And secondly, there was a trip of consecration that did finally come to him in verse 4 and 5. The Bible tells us, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken. Finally unto him and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed to Haran. Finally, there's a trip of consecration. Finally, he says, I'm going to do what God told me to do. Finally, he went all the way. Amen. Hey, we need to go all the way. Young people, go all the way with God. Give everything to God. Sanctify yourself and be what God wants you to be. Now, Abraham goes all the way. He gets to the land of Canaan. And Abraham is taken with him, his adopted son, Lot. Isn't that a blessed ideal? Now, when Abram goes to Canaan, I think it was in that time, whenever he's in the will of God, that even Lot, his nephew, gets saved by God. 
Abraham was saved. Abraham knew he was where he was going. But now his nephew, he's interested in him being what God wants him to be. And so during that time of going to Canaan and obedient to the will of God, and brother, listen to me, you're not a soul winner. You're not going to accomplish much until you get in God's will. Amen. And now he's in the will of God. And now he's made a trip of consecration to God to do what God has called him to do. He is in Canaan. And in that obedience, God does the work in their family. And here's a, a time when they're changed and everything is going to be better. And Lot makes his decision to follow the God of Abraham. By the way, everybody's affecting somebody. You're affecting your family. I mean, just like Abraham, he, he casts a shadow over Lot. And you as a parent cast shadows, amen, or grandparents, or, or, or saved uncles, or aunts, or, and here's what he's doing. He touched the life of Lot, and Lot decided to be saved by God. Now, I know grace wasn't then, but, and, but you can get what I'm saying. Uh, he, were, he had trusted God, like Abraham, his uncle had did, and it had made a difference in his life. But i got to hurry, so let me say lastly, I want you to see also the trip of condemnation. We see here the trip of compromise because he always, he couldn't get to Canaan. He stayed in Haran uh, too long. And finally, when he did get to Canaan, the trip of uh, consecration, but now it's a trip of condemnation because if you look back in your Bible quickly at verse number 10 or on the screen, you'll notice that the Bible says, and you know, one, you, you know they, uh, there's one thing that every book and every Bible ought to have, giant print. Amen or not? And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. I'll be done in just a few moments, so hang on if you would, please. We're headed toward the end. As it was in the days of Lot, now, there'll be several messages to get us there, but it's been a few years to get where we're at. But you mark it down, America's treading on dangerous soil, and we're living in some dangerous times. And the people of God is somewhat to blame for it. I said, I said the people of God is somewhat to blame for it. I said me and you are somewhat to blame for it. I know none of us want to hear that. But I tell you, it's like this story. The godly is not being as godly as they once was. And their example of godly living is not what it used to be. Their faithfulness is, a, is not what it once was. And so the last trip I want to share with you today that they experienced was Abraham and also Lot left Canaan and they went to Egypt. Now, folks, there's one thing for sure, and we all know it. Egypt is a type of the world. I mean, it was ungodly, the Pharaoh, the Antichrist type. I mean, tell you, uh, it was wicked. And here we find a godly man who, because of famine come in the land, decided he couldn't stay there any longer. What are you going to do when hardships come? Backslide? What are you going to do? Find an easier place of service? What are you going to do? Run up and run out and say, if serving God has a cause to it, I don't guess I'll serve God. What are you going to do? Abraham found a famine in his land, and he decided with humanistic reasoning that he needed to be somewhere else. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if God called you to go to Canaan, you stay where God called you to be until God changes his orders. God said, Abraham, go to Canaan. God didn't say nowhere in there. Abraham, you need to leave Canaan. But Abraham said it's getting tough around here. There's a famine in the land. I, I, I think I can make it easier somewhere else. Grass is greener. It's easier over yonder. I tell you, you better stay where you're at until God tells you to be somewhere else. But because it was hardships there, because it's not easy, brother, listen, standing for God, living for Jesus sometimes may cost you. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go to Egypt. 
I'll tell you, it's the wrong thing to do. And i got to wrap it up and let it go. But listen to me. God can take care of you in tough times. You don't have to leave the will of God. My God shall supply your every need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. When Elijah didn't have anything to eat, he said, I'm going to believe God. And God told a raven to take that man a good dinner. God can take care of us. But Abram made a journey and he went to Egypt. The problem is this, and as I, 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 I close, he took his nephew with him. And you, you, you know, and again, I don't have the time to tell you about compromise and halfway lies that Abraham got a part of. But while they were there, they began to go from sheep herding to cattle. If they're in this age, they'd be doing really well, I'll tell you that right now. Give me a witness there, Brother Walt, amen? But wait a minute. When they went back, you know what one of the verses over here says in chapter 13, verse 10? Next, next week, we'll discover that Lot got a taste of worldliness that he liked. You know, young people, sometimes you think about curiosity Hey, some things you don't need to be fooling with and you don't need to try and you don't need to say, I wonder what that would taste like. I wonder what that experience would be like. I'm telling you, stay away from it. Lot went down to Egypt and got a taste of Egypt. And the Bible says that when he come choice, Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. It was like the land of Egypt. He said, I remember down in Egypt, I had that. I did that. And he wanted to go back and he moved to Sodom because it reminded him of a worldly place called Egypt. He ought not touched it. He ought not tasted. it. He ought to stay away. And he's headed for destruction. Listen. We're living in some bad days right now. What this country has decided is just the tip of the iceberg. I tell you, we better be looking up. I'm telling you, God is going to bring judgment. And sin's not going to get by. We need to be living for the Lord. And we need to be trying to reach other people and get them saved. Because the end is in sight. Let's stand with heads bowed. While we stand with heads bowed, this study is a clear illustration of the age we're living in right now.